The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Again tonight, we're bringing you news of Gildy's Blade, the unique knife spatula invented by Gildy himself that you can get through parquet margarine at a tremendous saving. It's a sensational premium offer. Have paper and pencil ready for full details in our next announcement. Meanwhile, remember, parquet margarine is the margarine that always tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Since his niece's marriage is just a few weeks away, he tactfully leaves the parlor to Marjorie and Bronco and their wedding plans. This evening, he's returning from a long walk, enjoying the balmy spring air and his own baritone voice. When it's springtime in the Rockies, I'll be coming back to you. Little sweetheart of the mountains With your bonny eyes so blue <laughs> Who said that? Oh, Bullfrog. <laughs> Must be in Bullard's lily pond. <laughs> I bet I can go Lord, he can. Uh-oh. What a sneaky thing to do, running in his big brother. <laughs> uh, Chief Gates had better watch it. We'll have that frog singing bass in the Jolly Boys Quartet. When it's spring... Well, hello, children. I'm back. Come on in the parlor, Uncle Morris. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't get up, Bronco. You're practically a member of the family. <laughs> oh, by the way, Unky, Bronco's mother called while you were out. Oh, she wants Bronco and me to have dinner over there Sunday. Next Sunday? But Marjorie, you had dinner at Broadmoor last Sunday. Well, I know, but... A mother wants to spend as much time with Marjorie as possible, Mr. Gildersleeve. And you know how mother is. Yeah, I know how mother is. A fine woman. <laughs> but I'd plan to have you children here for Sunday dinner. Bertie has two chickens in the icebox. Well, maybe next week, Anki. Yeah, Mr. Gildersleeve. We'll be happy to come next week. I'll be happier if you come this week. We have to divide our time, you know, children. Let's not forget your old uncle. Oh, please, Uncle Mort, don't make a big thing out of this. Who's making a big thing out of it? I'll merely call Mrs. Thompson back and explain the situation. Do you think you really should, Uncle? Absolutely. <laughs> Mrs. Thompson's a hard woman to explain things to, but... Give me Broadmoor 1313. Uh, unlucky number. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bronco? What time is it? Well, it's uh, uh, 10 o'clock. Perhaps I should have told you. Mother goes to bed at 9.30. She does? Mm, better hang up. Hello? Uh, sorry, wrong number. What number were you calling, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh. <laughs> is that you, Mrs. Thompson? It is. Well, I guess it is the right number, after all. <laughs> Hope I didn't awaken you. You did. <laughs> what do you want, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, as long as you're awake, I'd like to talk to you about having the children over for Sunday dinner Oh, yes, Marjorie and Bronco are coming over here Now, Mrs. Thompson, I'd like to have them come over here You had them last Sunday I beg your pardon, Mr. Gildersleeve, they had dinner with you Oh, no, they didn't Oh, yes, they did No, they didn't I can tell you what you had for dinner Leg of lamb, mint jelly, succotash, and tapioca pudding we have that every Sunday. <laughs> Let's not be greedy, Mrs. Thompson. Greedy? Mr. Gildersleeve, isn't the pot calling the kettle black? The pot? <laughs> now see here, Mrs. Thompson. The children are coming to my house. No, they're not. Well, I won't argue the matter. Well, I will. Hmm? Yes, I won't. She hung up. <laughs> All right, I'll hang up on her, too. Uncle Morris... We couldn't help hearing you. You shouldn't talk to Mrs. Thompson like that. I shouldn't talk to her at all. I get further talking to the frogs. Where's my hat? Unky! I'll see you kids later. Gosh, Mr. Gildersleeve's pretty upset, isn't he? Yes. I guess he's going for another walk. Gee, I'm sorry, Bronco. Oh, I understand. Father goes for walks all the time. 
Rocco, we've got to do something about your mother and Uncle Mort. Yeah. It's too bad they can't get along when we're so much in love. Well, it's mostly Mother's fault. She gets pretty stubborn sometimes. Yes, I know. Your mother can be very stubborn. Oh? Well, your uncle can be very hot-tempered. Well, just a minute. Well, all right. Oh, Marge, darling. Oh, Bronco. There now, darling. Put your little head on Bronco's shoulder. We'll figure out some way to get them together. I wish they could be as happy as we are. <laughs> on the telephone last night. Eat your rhubarb, Leroy. <laughs> Somebody woke me up. You mean you could hear Mrs. Thompson way upstairs? It wasn't Mrs. Thompson he could hear, Unky. You woke up Elmer, too. Well, I'm sorry if I disturbed you and your pet turtle, Leroy. I scarcely raised my voice. Are you kidding? Elmer hasn't come out from under the bed yet. <laughs> Leroy, let's not exaggerate. He's still up there, shivering in his shell. Yeah. Shivering. <laughs> well, he isn't exaggerating very much, Hunky. Won't you please make an effort to get along with the Thompsons? Marjorie, I get along all right with Mr. Thompson. He's just an absent-minded old daydreamer. But that Mrs. Thompson... That's what I mean, Uncle Mort. Ever since Bronco and I became engaged, you and she have been arguing. Well... And last night, even Bronco and I had a quarrel. You did? All because of you and his mother. I'm sorry, my dear. You know I don't want anything to happen between you and Bronco. I know you don't, Unky. Of course, I don't think I'm in the wrong. I've always been willing to meet Mrs. Thompson halfway. Well, please remember that. Oh, and you'll be glad to know Bronco and I aren't having dinner at the Thompson Sunday. You're not? We thought you and Leroy might like to join us for a picnic at Grass Lake instead. Well. Oh, boy, a picnic at Grass Lake? That's keen. A capital idea, my dear. Love picnics. All right, George, I put one over in Mrs. Thompson after all. <laughs> so instead of having dinner here, Mother, Marjorie and I thought it would be nice if you and Father joined us at Grass Lake for a picnic. Well, it is nice picnic weather, and I really don't care just as long as you're spending Sunday with your father and me. Of course, I imagine Mr. Gildersleeve will be rather put out. <laughs> uh, Mother, Marge and I have been thinking... Can't you and Mr. Gildersleeve try to get along a little better? Son, I like your Marjorie very much. I'm devoted to the girl. But Mr. Gildersleeve... Oh, Edward, bring me an aspirin. What was that, Martha? <laughs> the aspirin. They're in the medicine chest. Oh, oh, medicine chest. Well, that's where the aspirin is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Edward. I'll go get some. Look, Mother, this is serious. If you aren't nice to Marjorie's uncle, it may affect our future. Really. What? Marge was crying about it last night. Oh, the poor dear. Well, for her sake and for you, son, I'll make every effort to be nice to Mr. Gildersleeve. Ah, oh, thank you, Mother. When I see him. And I don't expect to see him for quite some time. <laughs> well, I feel better already. <laughs> Where's the aspirin? Aspirin? Oh, I took it. <laughs> you took it? And I feel decidedly better. Oh, good heavens. I'll get it! Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'll get it. I'm on my way. Probably Bronco to take over the parlor again. Evening, Gildy. Oh, Judge, come in. I thought you were Bronco. Thank you, Gildy. I am young and handsome, but I'm not engaged. <laughs> <laughs> but don't give up, Judge. Where there's life, there's hope. <laughs> Plenty of life in me. In fact, I came over to see if Leroy wanted to fly a kite with me tomorrow. You, Judge? Yes, indeed. Hmm. I've always wanted to tell you to go fly a kite, but I never thought you'd do it. <laughs> now, Gildy, 
I just happened to be rummaging through the attic, and I came across my old box kite. Is that the one you discovered electricity with, Judge? <laughs> <laughs> now, Gilda, this March wind would send it sailing. Where is Leroy? Well, Leroy went sailing right after supper over to Piggy's house. Oh? Mm -hmm. He can't fly kites tomorrow, Judge. He's going on a picnic. Boy Scout picnic? No, Judge. It's a little family picnic. How delightful. Yeah, just Marjorie, Bronco, Leroy, and me. But that's only four. You have a five-passenger car, Gilde. Judge, I'm taking a large lunch. Well, I wouldn't think of horning in, but I am a lot of fun at a picnic. <laughs> yes. Oh, Judge Hooker. Well, good evening, Marjorie. My, you look pretty tonight. Well, thank you, Judge. She's going to make a beautiful bride, Horace. I agree, Gildy. I hear you're going on a picnic tomorrow, Marjorie. Yes, out at Grass Lake. There'll be six of us. Six? Hmm? Oh, meeting Bronco's parents out there, are you? No, Judge. I'm not getting going anywhere near Mrs. Thompson. Well, now, Anki, you promised to change your attitude. Didn't you say you'd meet her halfway? Well, yes, but... Then you won't mind if the Thompsons come to the picnic. What? I hate to do this to you, Yankee, but Grass Lake is halfway between Broadmoor and Summerfield. <laughs> Go fly your kite, Judge. We'll return to the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You've probably all heard about Gildy's Blade, the amazing knife spatula we're offering as a phenomenal premium bargain on this program. Tonight, we want you to hear from a woman who's already using one in her own kitchen, who can tell you just what a real cook thinks of this unique kitchen implement. It's none other than your old friend, Bertie. Big thing I want to tell you, ladies, is that Gildy's Blade is the handiest and most practical kitchen implement ever. Why, it's the grandest knife in fact, it's the two grandest knives you've ever used, both in the same handle. Got a serrated edge on one side for slicing and a straight edge on the other side for cutting. And it's a spatula, too, for all sorts of mixing, turning, and scraping. Handiest thing you ever had in your kitchen. So you listen now while Mr. Heaston tells you how you can get one of these wonderful knife spatulas. You'll thank me, too, for telling you about it. Thank you, Bertie. Now, ladies, believe me, here's a real premium bargain. Two fine kitchen knives and an all-purpose spatula in one handle. A real $2 value for only 50 cents and the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread you buy at your grocer's and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. Or in some states, you may have to use the side panel of the parquet package that shows the four yellow quarters. Send your half dollar, your bread wrapper or label, and the red end flap or side panel to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77. Your knife spatula, a $2 value, will be mailed to you immediately. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. The house is a beehive of activity, getting ready for the picnic with the Thompsons. Leroy could hardly sit still in church this morning just thinking about it. And the great Gildersleeve is having a hard time holding still for it, too. Ugh, what a picnic this is going to be, splitting my chicken with the Thompsons. Well, I promised Marjorie I'd be cordial to Mrs. Thompson, and by George, I will. I'll say, have a piece of chicken, you old hen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just about, Leroy. Hey, I think I'll take my turtle. He can play in the water. I wouldn't do that, Leroy. It's a big lake. You might lose Elmer. Yeah? On second thought, why don't you take him, Leroy? <laughs> nuh -uh. I'll take a pail and bring him a bucket of wet sand. Yeah, he liked that. <laughs> Crafty little fellow. <laughs> Miss Gillsleeve. Yes, Bertie? I'm through packing the lunch. Anything I can help you do? Well, you might help me find my ukulele, Bertie. The last time I saw that ukulele, Leroy had it hanging from a tree. Hanging from a tree? Yeah, so he was trying to get a wren to build a nest in the hole. A wren? Oh, my goodness. I hate to take it away from the birds, but I needed it at the picnic. Yes. I sure am glad you and Miss Thompson are going to get together. Well, I'll make the best of it. Yes, sir. It's about time you two met on neutral ground for a peace talk. Y'all been trying to scalp each other long enough. Bertie, we're not a couple of Indians. <laughs> no, sir. But it won't hurt none for you to get together and smoke that old piece of pipe. 
Bertie, that's a pipe of peace. <laughs> yes, sir. Pipe of peace, a piece of pipe. It won't hurt none to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that reminds me I better go down to Peavy's And get some cigars When Mrs. Thompson starts an argument I can always slip away Behind a smoke screen Hello, Peavy Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve what can I do for you this fine spring day? I need a number of things, Peavy. We're having a picnic this afternoon out of Grass Lake. A picnic, eh? Well, that sounds jolly. I don't know. I'm going out to meet the Thompsons. Oh. Yeah. Marjorie feels that Mrs. Thompson and I have to patch things up, Peavy. This is practically a peace conference. My, my. Better give me a half dozen cigars, Peavy. For you or Mrs. Thompson? <laughs> Naturally, for me, Peavy. Well, how about a couple of packages of chewing gum, Mr. Gildersleeve? Women like to chew gum. It exercises the jaw muscles. Uh, her jaw gets plenty of exercise. <laughs> Better give me a dozen paper plates and some of those little wooden forks, huh? Mm, all right. Uh, we have some nice candy if you'd like to take along a box. I'm not taking her any candy, Peavy. I'll just take the cigars and those paper plates. Very well. Now. There you are, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I hope it's a pleasant picnic. Well, it's got to be. In fact, I'm going out of my way to make it pleasant for Bronco and Marjorie's sake. Very commendable. Thank you, Peavy. The kids are livening up, and I'm taking along my ukulele. Well, that should keep things humming. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> I'm going to work hard on this, Peavy. My George, by the time the picnic's over, I'll have Mrs. Thompson right in the palm of my hand. <laughs> well? That's going to be quite a handful. It... <laughs> Thompson, they're here already. Well, good. Oh, looks like Mother's picked out a spot for us. Yeah, I imagine she has. Hey, Aunt, can I get down to the water? Not yet, my boy. We have to say hello to the Thompsons. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. Hello, Marjorie, dear, and Leroy. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. Hi. You're late, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, uh... remember, Mother. Well, he is. Uh, watch it, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> Too, Uncle Mort. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry that I'm late, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Thompson. Well, I didn't see you folks arrive. I was looking up a tree. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there was a squirrel looking down. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Thompson? Oh, splendidly, my dear. Well, I see you brought Leroy and your Uncle Snort. Oop. <laughs> no, Uncle Mort, father Oh, yes, to be sure uh, This is going to be one of my bad days Well, isn't it nice that we're here all together? Isn't it? Yeah, nice Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun oh, Yes, barrels of fun Say, while we're here, why don't we have a picnic? Yep <laughs> Edward, that's what this is supposed to be. Oh, oh, oh. well, <laughs> good idea having a picnic early in the season like this, Gildersleeve. Get the jump on the ants. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Leroy, why don't you take Mr. Thompson down to the shore and look under rocks? Yeah, we might find a crab. Come on, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Martha, we're going down to look under rocks. Be careful, Edward. But that's where he found her. <laughs> Bronco and I'll unpack the lunch while you talk to Mrs. Thompson. Well, uh, yeah, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, why don't you take Mother for a boat ride on the lake? Bronco! She loves boats. Don't you, Mother? Uh, yes. <laughs> I can't wait to take a boat ride. Well, Anki loves to row. Uh, I do? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, come along, Mrs. Thompson. I'm in over my head anyway. I may as well be in a boat. <laughs> There's a stump ahead, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? 
Bear to the left. Left. <laughs> now bear to the right. Bear to the left, bear to the right. I've got a bear by the tail. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll stop and rest a while, Mrs. T. Uh, uh, quiet out here, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, quiet. <laughs> this will never do. I better get out my uke. Uh, do you like music, Mrs. Thompson? Yes, I'm very fond of music. <laughs> uh, thought I'd strum my uke a little bit. Mr. Gildersleeve, why do you have it stuffed with straw? Oh, that's just a piece of an old bird's nest. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Leroy was trying to attract wrens with it. Of course, I've attracted quite a few wrens with it myself in my day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, how droll. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you liked it. Care to have me sing a little? I'm afraid there isn't much I can do about it out here. Guess not. You're in over your head, too. <laughs> what do you propose to sing? Uh, well, it's Sunday afternoon. How about this one? Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon with one you love. <laughs> the sun above <laughs> Waiting for the moon My ukulele playing A sentimental tune Cruising down the river On a Sunday afternoon Well? Well? Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes? You have a rather nice voice. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. You're a good audience. Uh, Edward used to play the ukulele. He did? Yes. But he could never remember the words to songs. <laughs> then one day he sat on the ukulele. <laughs> well, Edward is a little absent-minded. Oh, it wasn't that, Mr. Gildersleeve. I put it where he couldn't miss it. <laughs> Bless you, Mrs. Thompson. Bless you, too, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Why, George, Mrs. Thompson, this is the first chance I've had to really know you. I think I'll celebrate and sing another chorus. Please do. Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon with one oh, you love the sun of all. You're a wonderful tenor, you know that, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> yeah, let me help you out of the boat, huh? Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're most gallant. Yeah. Hey, Aunt, can Mr. Thompson and I go out in the boat? Uh, yes, Leroy, if you and Mr. Thompson stay close to the shore. Oh, Edward, did you hear Mr. Gildersleeve singing? Singing? Uh, no, Martha, I heard something bellowing. It sounded like a moose stuck in the mud. <laughs> Edward, Mr. Gildersleeve has a beautiful voice. Oh, I'm sure he has. Come along, Leroy. Let's go out and find that moose. <laughs> okay. I'll pull one you or you pull the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Thompson, let's go join Bronco and Marjorie, huh? Yes, let's. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm enjoying the day immensely. You know, so am I. I think Bronco and Marjorie had the idea that we couldn't get along. Well, we've never really had a chance to get acquainted. Ain't it the truth? Look at Bronco and Marjorie sitting there under the tree. Mm. Uh, isn't that a picture? What a sweet couple. Yeah. It's going to mean a lot to them that we've settled our little differences. Oh, I'm sure it'll make their happiness complete. Yes, indeed. Well, hello, children. We're back. Hello, Anki. Hi, Mother. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, how was the boat ride? We had a very nice time. Did you really? Yes, indeed. I even sang your mother a song, Bronco. And uh, she liked it? Well, she didn't jump out of the boat. <laughs> I enjoyed the boat ride and Mr. Gildersleeve's singing very much. Really? My dear, you heard what she said. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, Marge and I have been talking about you and mother. Again? 
We had a feeling that you'd come back and tell us everything was just fine, Mrs. Thompson. Well, of course, Marjorie. And we've decided that it's better for you both to just be your natural selves. But Bronco... You don't have to pretend anymore, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just be honest. Honest? Please, Mrs. Thompson. It'll be so much better. But I like your uncle. We're getting along fine. Really, believe me. You don't have to put on this act for us. Well, Unky, we've been wrong. Bronco and I admit it. Just be yourselves. Oh, brother. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Ready, Mrs. Thompson? Ready. Very well, if you must know the truth, I think Mr. Gildersleeve is a complete bore and an egotistical windbag. Oh, is that so? Well, you listen to me, Mrs. Thompson. There you see, Marge. Oh, that's much better. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, Mrs. Thompson. Let's go look under rocks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Once again, here's how you send for Gildy's Blade, the unique knife spatula that gives you two fine kitchen knives and an all-purpose kitchen spatula all in one handle. Send 50 cents, the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread you buy at your grocer's, and the red end flap or side panel from a package of parquet margarine to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to include your own name and address. And hurry, send for your Gildy's Blade tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Say, the water looks inviting, Mrs. Thompson. I was just thinking. What are you going to do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, you can't have a picnic by a lake without going wading. Do you mind if I splash around a little? I love water. Oh, go right ahead. Yeah, get my shoes and socks off here. Double knots. (laughs) My shoes, that is. (laughs) Uh, There. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Feels good, though. Is that a fish? No. (sighs) Enjoying yourself, Mr. Gildersleeve? You bet. Hi, George. This was a profitable day, Mrs. Thompson. Don't you worry. I'll convince the children that you and I settled our little differences. Why, of course. I'll explain to them that I patched up our disagreement. You did? Now, wait a minute. I think I was the one who straightened things out. Oh, no. It was I. Oh, no. It wasn't. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't wish to argue the point. Well, neither do I. Very well. I'm going back to the car. Okay. Hey, come back with my shoes and stockings. (laughs) Oh, slippery. Zee. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gilder Sleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Next, join the excitement of Break the Bank on NBC.